Hi, this is Emeline from the Off Track family. Hope you're doing fine today. This is the first episode of our Defender Repair series, so I hope you'll enjoy. In this episode, we will show you how to replace the indicator switch and we will also explain to you some reasons of why the indicator or the headlight switch might fail. So what's the problem? About a month before our road trip to Sweden, we had a problem with the stock headlights of our Land Rover Defender. Sometimes there were no lights at all, but only side lights. And when we pushed the high beam, those headlights then worked normally. We thought it was the small headlight switch, so we ordered a brand new one to replace it in the future. During the first day of our road trip, we didn't know we brought with us a third passenger called by the famous name Murphy. And luckily, we had this part with us in the car. During a stop on the highway in a German gas station, the headlights totally stopped working. We were quite confident and replaced the small headlight switch with the brand new one, but the problem remained the same. We then tried to look at another problem, but without any success. The night and rain were there and no headlights, only sidelights. So driving on the highway was absolutely impossible. So yes, we did sleep in the car on the gas station's parking. The next morning, the fog was there. So again, impossible to continue the road trip with no headlights in those conditions. At that time, we sent a Facebook post on different Land Rovers groups. After some discussions with very kind members, we found the part responsible of our problem. It was the indicator horn high beam switch, but of course impossible to replace it on a Sunday. Luckily, a member explained how to make a temporary link between two wires to allow the headlights to work. It's the blue one with the red and blue one. With this trick, you no more have the constant high beam, but you can use them temporarily. In any case, you can use them when necessary, and most importantly, the headlights will work normally. We also have four LED light spots on the roof rack with different switches and linkage, so it wasn't a problem to continue our road trip even on dark roads. That's the short story of our breakdown and what takes us to show you how to solve this headlights failure. When we came back from our road trip to Sweden, we decided to replace the failing switch unit. It's a bit more complicated to replace the indicator unit than the master light switch because you need to remove the steering wheel, but it's not a pain. We ordered one of each switch assembly to have them in case of another breakdown. We already had the small master light switch for headlight activation and we ordered the one for the indicators and the wipers too. The stock Land Rover genuine parts are very pricey, so you can easily take the Lucas ones, which are of correct quality according to reviews. We didn't order the Brit part ones because of the reviews. But before replacing the switch unit, you have to solve the main problem of why it failed. In our case, it just failed because it was worn after 155 kilometers of use and we didn't yet identify the problem with our old failed unit. But depending on which model of Defender you have, the problem can be different. There's a lot to read about headlight switch breakdowns. The reason is because there's no relay between the switch and headlights from the battery. The stock halogen headlights are using a lot of amps to work and this kind of switch is an old type of construction that doesn't resist very well to those high amperage. In some cases, the problem can come from two melted metal parts or contact problems because of burnt plastic parts. On our 2.4 TDCI from 2009, there's already a relay for headlamps activation and that's why we didn't have any problem with any switches before that. To prevent a future breakdown, if you have an older Defender model, you need to limit the amperage directly supported by the switch. For this, there are two possibilities. 
The first one is to install LED headlights because the amps of LEDs are very low compared to halogen H4 bulbs. The second possibility is to keep your stock headlights and install two 40 amps relays to decrease the amperage transiting through the switch. Personally, we were looking for LED headlights but weren't really satisfied with what we find on the market. For sure, stock halogen defender headlights have a very poor lightning. And LED lights are really brighter than halogen. But the color of LED lights is far whiter than halogen and its light isn't comfortable for driving. The light of halogen is more yellowish, but your eyes will get less tired during a longer night of driving. This will be part of our next video about LED and halogen lights. The other point with LED is that it doesn't produce any heat. That's not a real problem, but if like us you live in a place with temperatures often below 0 degrees Celsius with snow and freeze, you can have non-usable headlights clogged with snow and freeze. And that can be a problem to see and to be seen. We contacted Trucklight because it's a serious brand for solid and durable headlights. We know they are producing an ECE version that is road legal and approved for Europe. The model is 27290C or 27291C, depends on if you have a left or right hand drive car. Another version is the 27275C with well-made heated lenses for extreme cold situations but unfortunately only for the US at this time and there are no ECE heated lenses version for Europe. So for the moment we won't invest in LED headlights. We do have cheap Chinese LED lights on the roof and they work fine. Only one of four isn't correctly sealed and some LEDs stopped functioning. But it's not a big problem because that's an auxiliary lightning. But headlights aren't just made to see but also to be seen. So if you're on a road trip away from home and your headlights fail, we find it better to have the possibility to repair relatively easily or just to change a bulb. LED is a more complicated technology, so if one of your headlights doesn't work, you literally have to change the complete headlight and not just a part of it. Some brands like Truck Light are serious with military specs, durable and waterproof. But that's not the case for a lot of Chinese replicas available on the web for a lower price. For all those reasons, we decided to keep our stock ones with poor lightning. And maybe if one day a brand like Trucklight makes an ECE certified LED headlight with heated lenses, we might make the investment. So if like us you don't want to install LED headlamps and that your Defender isn't built like ours with a headlight relay as stock, you will need to install a kit or make it by yourself. A kit is available on paddock spares named Boomslang Performance Headlight Loom and it's around £30. The reference of this kit is PM330. It's not difficult to install. The only thing you might won't like is that this relay will be exposed to the elements and will be submerged in water during wading. This is because it's made to be installed behind the headlight. It shouldn't be a problem because we have for many years now the same kind of setup for our light forces auxiliary lights with a 30 amps relay behind the left headlight and no misfunctioning at all with many wading. You have to connect the yellow female connector on each headlight, right one and left one. Then you connect your all black male connector to the other black female connector of the kit. The kit is made this way, so on the opposite side to where you installed the relay, you will have a free connector and this one won't be wired at all. Then you have to connect the positive section to your battery with the 40 amps fuse provided in the kit. Use zip ties to hold properly the wires and relays. And if all is correct, you will hear the relay clicking behind your headlight when you switch it on and off. Just like for us, with our 30 amps relay for our light forces.
Now you can replace your indicator switch assembly. For this you will need a wrench, a 22 socket, a permanent pen, some WD-40 spray and a quarter imperial key. First you have to unscrew the three plastic covers under your steering wheel. After that, make a mark with a pen on your steering wheel to keep the correct position for when you will put it back in place. If you lose the correct position, that will be a problem. Unscrew the main bolt of the steering wheel with the 22 socket and the wrench. You can add some WD-40, your best friend, to make it easier to remove. Take your wheel with both hands and apply some pressure from left to right and it will come out. Unplug the three switches now you have to remove the little screw that retains the complete switch assembly with the three switches. Remove the block. After that you have to remove the small headlight switch by unscrewing the single bolt. For the wiper switch you will need a quarter imperial key and remove the small circlip, trying not to damage the plastic pin. This done, you can remove the wash wipe switch. Unscrew the bolt that holds the master light switch and remove the switch. This leaves us only with the main indicator switch that failed. and the old wash wipes and headlight switches that we will reinstall on the new indicator switch. You can now put together the headlight switch and the wiper switch on the new indicator assembly. It's the same operation as before but the other way around. Put back in place the new switch assembly in the correct position. You have to be sure that it's the correct position. Then screw back the screw Plug the three connectors to each other and test that all is running well
Last step, you have to put back in place your steering wheel. It's important to put it correctly back in place with the marks you made before with the pen so that your wheels will turn just as before. You also have to be sure that the blue plastic part of the indicators is in the right position for the steering wheel. And screw back the three plastic covers. With this operation you have a new switch that should work fine with no malfunction for several kilometers because your headlights are running with the two relays and now they aren't only supported by the switches. So there, it's finished with this repair episode. I hope it will be helpful for you. Would be absolutely pleased to read you, so don't hesitate to comment down below and let us know if you have any questions or other tips for us. Please don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell and also share our video. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.